My name is Jen Wilson. I'm a senior programmer here at Film Independent. I want to say thank you to our Film Independent lead sponsor, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. HFPA has been an ardent supporter of this program for many years, and we're very grateful. Thank you to our new virtual screenings partner, Vision Media. Make sure to check out the Film Independent calendar to see what virtual screenings we have coming up. Uh, please welcome our very special guest for today. He's Faraz Fayad, the director of the multi-award winning film Last Men in Aleppo in 2017. Today we're discussing his Oscar-nominated film The Cave, which is now in the running for four Emmys for outstanding cinematography in a nonfiction program, for writing in a nonfiction program, directing in a nonfiction program, and exceptional merit in documentary filmmaking. Welcome for us. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Joining us for, from Berlin today. Yes. Um, do you want to talk about first, the, the film um, is a, about uh, a woman named Dr. Amani who runs an, um, an underground hospital in uh, Ghouta in Syria um, called The Cave because it's uh, underground. Do you want to talk about um, the process of, meet, of how did you meet her and how did you decide to make the film? Yeah, thank you for having me uh, in this is, um, um, uh, interview and, um, um, and panel. So uh, um, the film um, the cave. Let me let me explain some 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 things. The cave is the name of the hospital uh, that uh, run uh, by Dr. Amani, and it's called the cave because um, it's the the way how it designed or made. It looked like a cave. It's hidden hospital, and this is, was like a nickname. Most a lot of hospital that was like hidden hospital or like um, um, uh, uh, to uh, avoid. Uh, direct attack from the Russian warplanes for the hospital and the medical facilities. So they start like to, to build this hosp uh, hospital or like what's so kind of hospital in, in such a, uh, in, 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 in a place, a city place, and then they start to, to have it, um, the name, uh, the caves. And this one of this is hospital called the cave. So we keep the film in that because they have a diff many meaning and many layers for understand this story. Um, and um, Eastern Ghouta, it was historically part from Damascus, uh, but uh, in the Syrian regime, in the time of the uh, the Syrian regime, uh, reached the authority, it separated the the, the uh, uh, this is uh, uh, which is, was the countryside to another city and call it like Eastern Ghouta or like Reif Dimashk in in uh, uh, our country of Damascus, countryside of Damascus. Uh, so. Uh, it mostly it's a green area and uh, like feed Damascus with a vegetable and water and everything uh, because Damascus is just a place where the capitals and just business and work in general in this way. Uh, uh, so uh, and this uh, area was seized for uh, from the beginning of the revolution the people went to the street and screamed for demonstration and asked for uh, for change for democracy and then they start the siege and was it was the longest siege in the history of uh, um, of Syria, but also in the in the modern uh, in the modern history as a long, uh, longest run siege, which which is, was uh, as a, as uh, as the UN described it, it's like five years and longest siege in the uh, in the modern history. Um, the film I start this is shooting the uh, the footage, the actual the the footage, the the development footage start like in 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 um, in 2013. I was like shooting. Um, um, with the beginning of the revolution, 2011, I, uh, 11, I start like to to do filming for everything happening in the street, and all this is what is that I shoot it between 2011 um, and after that, it was have a different uh, 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 um, uh, different places, including like the work of doctors, work of uh, the 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 activism who is like demonstrating the street and that and those part of this is footage in 2013 was about the hospital and it was like uh, turned to be later an idea for making the films called The Cave. 2017, I decided 
uh, to uh, to focus on the uh, the hospital and and, and this um, uh, case or situation of the hospital, which is called the cave and the active uh, the uh, the work of the doctor and the uh, the targeted of the uh, of this is hospital. And there was an idea also to look to the work of the of the women in 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 these places because their work was very active in there. And then um, I start to shoot with many many of hospitals. Uh, uh, until I, um, uh, one of this is hospital was the cave, and was there was uh, was run by Dr. Amani. And later, after one years of the working, the actual shooting for the film, uh, I, I figured out, out that Dr. Amani will be the main subject of the movie. But we wasn't sure hundred percent that will happen because. Um, uh, we need to protect the hospital because any information that. Uh, 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 knowing about the hospital, the hospital will be targeted. Any information about Dr. Amani also she will be targeted. So we do not know that she will end as as a as a uh, as a main subject. Even I was feeling that this is she will be the main subject um, uh, for her security until she left Syria, uh, uh, and I feel this is a story will uh, will uh, will be told through. Uh, uh, eyes of Dr. Amani and her her uh, her work in in Eastern in Eastern Gota uh, and they, they give exactly in this way. So I I had read that um, you actually had to work on part of this film remotely because you you could not physically be in Guta. Uh Can you tell us how exactly did that work and also why couldn't you be in Guta? Yeah, um, good. As I said, Eastern Ghouta was sieged area. Nobody easily go in and nobody easily go out. Um, and I have to tell the story. As a Syrian, I'm not a person who is welcomed in in my country. I'm I'm, I'm followed. I've been arrested, tortured, two times, not one times. So I was. Uh, um, I was careful about. I don't want to be arrested again. And because I know if I've been arrested again, I will be killed. So, but I, I didn't allow this to stop me from doing my movie because this is what this, any uh, any dictatorship authority or authority that fighting for freedom of expressions or 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 uh, for uh, uh, supporting democracy system or or like explore the war crimes, they will be happy to to this active. Uh, any uh, uh, filmmaker or journalist who can work in this situation. So, but I didn't allow this because this story was important for me and I want to tell this is, but already I have a like footage, I, I shoot this is footage and I develop it uh, through connecting with a cinematographer in this way. And when Dr. Amani being forced to leave Eastern Ghouta, when Eastern Ghouta fell down by the hand of Russian, taken, uh, taken by Russians and the Syrian regime in 2000, uh, 18, end of 2000, uh, in 2018, um, she left to northern of Syria, and I managed to enter to northern of Syria and film with her uh, there. So I entered to Syria, even it was the area where I was shooting, also continue shooting with her. It was very dangerous in, in such a situation, but I did. I managed like to enter that area because it's not sieged area, but it's a very dangerous area where there is a car bomb, there is control for Al Qaeda, there is, there is all the time warplanes bombing, but but I feel that I have to all now I have the access and I have to uh, to deal with this situation. So normally I did film with her uh, four months personally, and my cinematographer uh, through like. A, uh, from um, um, remotely uh, was uh, I kept shooting with her like two two years and this is a reason because I kept ask uh, I uh, we kept talking about filming as a daily uh, situation because we need to document everything we don't know how we we'll, this footage will be used generally there is a plan of course there is something we need to do with this footage but the important things was to have as we can documentation for such a situation. So this film, uh, because it's the, sub the, the subject is a hospital and doctors uh, covers a lot of the different injuries that people get um, as a result of the wartime. Um, but in particular, uh, it talks about uh, chemical weapons attacks. And there's a scene uh, early on where the doctors are actually watching footage 
of a very bad uh, chemical attack is, is the footage of the famous sarin attack from 2013. We you uh, in uh, uh, the footage that you saw them in the in the mobile uh, on uh, when the um, Dr. Amani and other Dr. study those footage. Yes, it's from the actual uh, 2013 chemical attacks, and in the end of the movie, it was like um, a kind of chemical weapons that used in the end of the siege of Eastern Ghouta. Also, it, we was the only team who documented that uh, footage, and to mention here. We, um, um, we filmed around 500 hours um, in, in, in for this is film. But the actual footage that we, with the, the, the full footage that we have, we have access for it's 1,000 up to 1,200. Because every day in, during the editing, I was receiving a footage um, from this is area because where we was, while we was editing, the situation in Syria continue and the targeting for hospital continue and it was like one to to try to find a way how I can use all of this is, um, uh, uh, situation in one film. It wasn't easy when we couldn't look to all this is footage. Of course, it would need years and years of work, but I managed to see something I wasn't even as a Syrian, even a person who was, uh, as a person, I experienced so much in, in seeing and think, seeing torture in the prison, um, uh, seeing war crimes in front of me. But the footage that being documented in the hospital, in all the hospital that we we access to, I feel it. It's a shame on 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 the history of the humanity, all of our history, because all of this is history that documented history uh, through uh, years and years. And there's no any movement. It was very powerful. Um, um, like it's very very scary things for our 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 um, uh, for the silence. So it was also another motivation to to uh, to put this story in in somehow um, and tell it through the the eyes of Dr. Dr. Amani. Yes, the the film, including so many documentation for crime against the humanity. The film is like has this is. I wanted this is film me and my team and Dr. Amani, the doctors who in the film to be this is film, like I can just shout and scream or like call for actions to uh, uh, to think about how we can push the justice for for bringing the justice for the uh, the, uh, the chemical attacks victims or survivor. Yeah, uh, I remember when I when I saw that footage in the movie. That's that's the first live footage that I've ever actually seen of the sarin gas attack. Um, and still today, if you're looking for information on that attack in the United States, you can find still photos, but you can't you can't find very uh, much information acknowledging that that's actually what happened there. And it. For for me, and I think for a lot of people in the United States and other countries, that attack was what made us all know how serious the situation was. So I understand why they didn't want that information to get out, because they didn't want other people to get involved in the conflict, probably. But that attack and the horror of it really signaled for me what the situation in Syria how, how very serious it really was. And um, so including it um, in the film, I thought was really important just because not a lot of people have really seen the real effects of, of sarin gas on people and they don't know how absolutely shockingly terrible it is um, to yeah. use that on your own citizens. Um, yeah. You so, are you are right. And after that chemical attack, the first time that used in 2013, after that it used more up to more than 100 uh, uh, um, gas attack um, documented. And there was a run investigative around, around that. And the world didn't hear about this because there's a lot of disinformation and manipulation about, about uh, the crimes that been taking place especially about this. So if you go and search about the chemical attacks, you will find a lot of, a lot of this is 
uh, disinformation about the truth. Uh, and that's make you confused and, um, uh, and, and feeling like there is something problem with this story. The, 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 because it is something, one of the turning point of documenting the, 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 the crime against the humanity in Syria. And this is one of the things that, that should be investigated and bring Assad and uh, everyone's support to, uh, uh, to, um, uh, to be like, uh, to the, 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 interna the, the international justice to bring uh, uh, the, um, the, uh, like the, the, the justice for the, uh, the victims and survival in, in, in this way. That was important how we can process that and put it. Of course, the, the, the one of the dilemma that we have to face, how we can put this is graphic footage in this way, how we can find a way like to make the people receive it and understand it and get through it. And this is why, why was the story of Dr. Amani was a very strong connection with, uh, with, with, the, with the, the, whole, the, the whole history that from the beginning of the siege in Eastern Ghouta until the moment where Eastern Ghouta been uh, uh, occupied by, by, by uh, or colonism by Russia. So can you tell us um, where are the subjects of, of the film now? Um, we see uh, there's so there's four main subjects, right? Three doctors and a and a nurse. Where where are all of them now? Doctor Amani and uh, she get married and she's now living in Germany in Berlin. Um, uh, Doctor Salim also live uh, in Germany in other city in, uh, in Germany. Uh, also. Um, Samahir in Lebanon. Uh, uh, so, and uh, Allah is still working in Syria. Um, uh, so, um, mostly uh, the, the subject is separated around the world uh, currently. And Dr. Amani kept her work and kept, uh, kept her, her leading for the organization that she established an organization to support the, uh, the work of the woman in the medical field in Syria. And that's very important also as a result of this, the impact of this is film, how we can this is film make an action and, and change for uh, in the actual, not just in the, the idea of telling stories and cinema, but an idea how we can film uh, change the world around us. So towards uh, the end of the film, it, it appears that either, Either most people or some people are are being forcefully evacuated from Guta. What? Um, why was that happening? That they were forcing everyone to leave, and then what's what? Uh, what's the status of Guta now? Are there people still there? Yeah, there. Normally, in most of the cities, when there's like forest displacement some of the people decide to stay, even it's so uh, big risk on their lives. Even they know, they know that they will live in such in, in kind of ghetto because the government all the time will government and Russians and all of, I mean, the, the, milit the military who controlling there, they will put like on their on all the time in kind of, they put them, uh, um, they put a title of dangerous people around them. So all the time they will check them going out or going in to, from their area where they are. But for, for in the end, where these people will go? That's the reason for a lot of people to stay. Um, half of, the, of, of, of those cities, or m more than the half, left, left those cities, like in Eastern Good, our homes before, or like Aleppo before, uh, they left and they end in uh, northern of Syria, in, uh, in refugee camps, where we we uh, um, where also now it's under under um, harsh circumstances, and they're like it's hit by by COVID nineteen. Also, there is a bomb. I mean, in, in, it's not an easy situation for these people. They run from a war. They coming to 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 face uh, like uh, the the uh, the disease, and <laughs> they have to face the war. It's something like you can't even put it in imaginations to think how much those people they have to deal with in, in such a situation, yeah. 
but but what what we can do in a position of telling the story that bring the attention for that hoping and wishing it's like a, a wishing list in general that those stories can educate the people and bring attention and kind of um, give more information about how those people can involve or engage themselves to to support to support the victims or survival uh, from uh, from this is Jane's side that taking it, it, it's been run in, for nine years until now. The film, um, amazingly, you know, not only addresses uh, the war in Syria, but also talks a lot about the sexism um, uh, around women being in positions of leadership. Um, do you want to talk about? Um, what you think the the impact of the film has been have have very many people in syria been, been able to see it and what do you think the 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 impact of um addressing a subject which i assume is is kind of taboo to talk about um the position of women in society um yeah. do you think anything has has changed or attitudes about that are changing there, uh, like um during the, the work on the films, Dr. Amani managed it through her position and her um, work to, to, uh, to face this and change the society and, and tell the society around her uh, that there is no, uh, uh, no, um, no life or like no change for the current situation without the equality in, 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 in this country, without, the, without respecting the woman or giving the woman uh, the, uh, the rules uh, to deal in, in, in every single field in that. And this is a part of the, the wishing of democracy system that we wish as a young generation in Syria, like fighting for from, from nine years until now. Of course, I mean, uh, the film has a, like a very strong flashback when it's been come out and uh, seen by the Syrian society because the, the, a lot of people, they don't understand the cinema. They think the cinema it's, should be all the time promote good things. It's about like promote nation, promote things. They don't understand the cinema has to play a role, very important role of looking to the problems and try like to, to communicate where where the mistakes or like let's let's not call it mistakes or problems but let, let's call it like where there is a hole and gap where 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 think that should be questionable in this way and that's not easy for the people because you put that this is in front of them as a mirror and they have to look to that and everyone like feel this is film attack him directly and that were the problems where where i feel it's the film succeed but that for, for them, it's like a problem. And I feel that where the change will happen because maybe the first time when the people see it and they, 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 didn't, they, they get angry or upset sometimes with that, uh, a lot of people, mostly the women, they, act, they feel this is film speaking strongly for them. Uh, uh, but I think with the time, a lot of people see it again and again and feel this is film is, is, has a different view that we have to see it. They have they have to uh, have this is to rise a con conversation in, in in general. But at least in society of the society of Dr. Amani around her where she was working, people changed. People see something different. She managed as a woman leading an hospital, like serving uh, uh, around four hundred thousand uh, people under siege, uh, giving different support for the little girls, the women, raise the number of the women to work on this hospital, it managed to make, build a culture. And that's what I think important. It's like a, in, in general, when we talk about the rule of the cinema, we're talking about a pop culture. Like this is what the cinema managed to do. That's what I feel this is a film was, where succeed to build kind of strong negotiation and conversation and fight on the Facebook or social media and I feel this is what's make the film strong uh, statement. Um, so uh, the New York Times this week um, 
uh, characterizes the civil war in Syria as winding down and uh, Assad being the, the de facto victor, winner. Um, would you agree with that viewpoint or what, what viewpoint do you have on the current situation in Syria? Is the war actually starting to come to an end? I think I, I, you know, I mean, generally, um, we have this just like this is limited idea about everything happened in conflict, winner or loser, <laughs> which is I don't agree about it in general. Um, maybe in the in the the, the military uh, uh, conversation, yes, there's a loser and winner in the, in the between two two parties like uh, two. Uh, to get uh, in the football, there's like winner and loser. That's the way. But I think we have to look to that situation in different way. For us as a Syrian, if we question what the winner, what the winning that Assad achieved in this as well, destroy the country, destroy uh, uh, heritage, uh, displaced, forcibly displaced, uh, half of the nation outside. Uh, like a generations completely born and raised uh, don't know what the normal life is. This is, it's hard to call it winning in general. You call it burning the country in, in this way. A person stand in a country full of, of, of fires and not him and not another president, a president, a president can rebuild this country in easy way in general. So who can build the country? The, the new generation who managed like to, like to flee and start to uh, um, educated in, in Europe or the US, and they will think in different way like to rebuild this country and provide different, different view in, in that way. For me, I don't, for personally as a Syrian, uh, who's work in the cinema and the field of the culture and, and generally I don't see this as winning. I see this is the worst achievement for for us as a human in general and this is will never be easy like to read uh, to look to look away in this is symbol way uh, and read it in this is simple way like uh, uh, um, uh, as a way what we can wish that the justice play a strong role in the future of Syria. They just that the, uh, uh, like supporting like um, um, a kind of uh, those international uh, court that suing the, the the who involved in the war crimes and then acknowledge the war crimes, acknowledge the people who involved, and bring voices for the people who's been hurt and uh, and to be their stories listened in this way. And I think. What we can try in this is way, bringing those stories up for the world, and that's the only way we can bring some justice for Syria. So, um, what's what what is the future for your work personally, for for you personally, and and for your work? Do you um, have another project upcoming? Do you think you will keep focusing on? Um, Try, can, can, are you allowed back in Syria right now? No, I'm not allowed. But like officially, I can't go to Syria. I can't go to any area that's controlled by, by any uh, arm, like an uh, armed group or like a group like following for the Syrian regime or Russian in this way. I mean, uh, my life limited in for the trouble generally in this way. But yes, my future is, I mean, I, for me, all the time I live with the idea, I wish those two films didn't happen. That's what I, what I wished, generally. It's not something like to, uh, to say like it's achievement in this way. The, the, the only achievement that those stories come to the world, in front of the world and the people around the world heard uh, and see uh, what's happened and, and, and can some of them like move or are educated in such a, such a way. This is maybe the education that could those film lift inside the people. This is the only achievement that I can feel like, okay, if I meet somebody and say like, you know, I didn't know about Syria anything. And the story of Khalid in Last Minute Boy, story of Dr. Amani, like 
it's make it change my 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 way of looking to the refugee crisis or for the conflict in Syria or whatever they call it in, in this way. That's that's something like I feel like this is what like they kind of proud about it. But but questioning myself, no, I feel I wish this film never happened. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm, I have a, a new films. I'm thinking about them and. In the, in the near future, and I'm working on on, on, on the project. But uh, what I wish, generally, from my film, my film that I do, and the focus on on how my film can lift, uh, like like can bring some education for uh, in, in 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 many situation. Not educational film in name, like in the way, like with the, with the using the the storytelling, with using the power of the storytelling and the power of the cinema or the core of the cinema in, 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 in this way. But this is my soul, generally. The cinema is my life, my soul, and my identity as a, as a Syrian who, where I lost my identity for like nine years before. Do you think, um, you know, before, before 2011, um, how do you think you, you envisioned your own career being or what type of films did you think you were going to make back then before everything happened? Were you, were you going to make documentaries even or were you more focused on narrative, narrative films? Um, mostly I was, um, love those, like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan for this film that have an epic element. Um, and a film like uh, Bicycle Thief for uh, Jessica, um, it and half for uh, for Fellini's, uh, Julian Jim for Francois Truffaut. Those films that I feel like full of the cinema and have a, like a conversation about war and the impact of the war. Of course, like Tarkov, uh, uh, Tarkovsky movie also left inside me like a lot of things. Steven Spielberg, Schlinder List was like one of my, my uh, special film, I mean, I can't call it in a w different, uh, like I can't find a word like to describe that film, the impact of that film on me, but the film, uh, the, the film that discussed the rule of the war and the violence in our life and have uh, this epic element and this res res resilience of the human resilience that was like very uh, close to me uh, in this way. And I think most of the film, like uh, filmmaker like Kurosawa, Bergman, Fellini, all of them bring those elements to their film and make them like um, bring a different view for for how we can see the violence, how we can see war, how we can see how we can see the human resilience uh, um, uh, in, in in different in different level in 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 this way. Agnes Varda also like her film symbol, the symbol of her film for looking to. Uh, to the journey of the happiness in, and after the like the second world war like after the, the in, in, in Europe those films have a so much powerful element that they feel um, beautifully of course I mean this film I, you can not describe them a fiction or like not fiction because they stand on non-professional actors and on Mostly, the stories is collected from personal life of the act of, of the director and the personal life of the actor of the personal life that around those people who work on this movie. So, uh, so generally, outside of even like descriptions, like to tell them like uh, uh, like a fiction or non-fiction. I mean, like in title, yeah, we can say like this is it's been fictional stories. But generally, you feel there is something communicate with you. That 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 was my 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 way of telling the stories even before the, uh, uh, the, the, the war in Syria. And this is what, what I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on in, in my narrative is bringing the core of the humanity and the, the surviving and resilience in, in this way. And the, 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 the moral dilemma that, the, that us as a human live through and discuss in the middle of that. And you can see it in last minute in the Lippo when he said like, should I stay or should leave? Should I help my daughter or help uh, the children of the uh, of my neighbors? Uh, Dr. Amani said like in the middle of that, also the dilemma said like um, uh, in the cave, should uh, I, I can't do anything for these people. I wish to die. I wish to not eat uh, uh, anymore and 
uh, rather seeing a child di dying from hunger. This conversation means so much for me because it's re represent our humanity and represent uh, the values that we, with uh, the, the question that uh, uh, hunt us before our sleeping. Well, thank you so much for for joining us and, and talking with us today about the film. I think it's such an important piece of work and thank you so much for your the personal sacrifice that you've made to make these films. It's really tremendous and um, I wish you well and um, take care. You too, Jennifer. Bye. Thank you, uh, Film Independent.